speaker, Carly Kloss, has managed to bridge the worlds of high fashion modeling with con computer programming in code with Klossy. In 1991, 29% of all undergraduate computer information science bachelor's degree went to women, according to the US Department of Labor. Today, only 18% do. Half a million more jobs related to computers are expected to be added by 2024. But for some reason, young women are not being exposed to these careers. Carly and I have talked about this at length, first at Fast Company's Innovation Festival last year and earlier this year at TED. But I thought it was time that she shared this amazing initiative with her own industry, our industry. So I'm pleased to invite Carly Kloss to the stage. Thank you for having me. Oh, please. Thank you. Um, to be here. OK, so let's start with the I'm not going to throw duct tape at anyone. Okay. Don't, get, right. don't get excited. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> Um, let's start with the fundamental question, which is, you know, why, why should girls code? Well, first of all, I think before we even go there, I want to explain what code is. Cause okay. That's a good place to start. You have a very smart audience of people in front of us, but I think code is something that is transforming the world around us, and yet it's still this abstract thing that people know uh, they should know what it is, but not a lot of people really do. And I think that was kind of why I wanted to learn what it was. And at its core, it's a language. And like any language, it's not easy to learn, but uh, it's incredible what you can do with it. Um, and it can be applied in really creative ways ways. Uh, I like the duct tape analogy, and I think there's um, so many ways that code, you know, is, has, learning how to code has opened my eyes to not only so many businesses and, uh, you know, incredible inventions and, non and uh, startups like Airbnb, but uh, understanding the language and the actual fabric of what creates those businesses is, is what it starts with. So, so how, did, how did you first start learning how to code? So, yeah, it's not a, a normal transition from uh, runway to, to code. But like anything else, um, I wanted to understand what it was. And I've always been, been really curious. Uh, I started modeling. I met a lot of you guys when I was 15 years old. And, you know, I've had this incredible experience through my career as a model. I've been able to travel the world and, and meet incredible entrepreneurs, but I have always had this curiosity about what, uh, about how things work. And so I wanted to understand, you know, I was meeting Joe, I was meeting incredible entrepreneurs, uh, and I wanted to understand what they knew that I didn't and that most of the world doesn't. And I started, I, I took a code class. And so for, for those of us who are less informed, you know, what are the, like, the ABCs that they teach you in that class? So it starts out, so I started out learning something really high level, just kind of what code is and how it builds something, uh, the front end and back end of something. And, you know, even just that alone, understanding high level, how it works, was really incredible to just understand what is possible. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, there is opportunity still. I mean, especially in our industry. This is something that I'm really excited about because I think in fashion, there's so much opportunity for innovation using technology, using data. There's, I mean, you, you guys, uh, I, it, there's big business, you know, fashion, there's a lot of, uh, there's just so many corners of our industry that I think have, uh, are ripe for disruption, to use a tech, a tech term. But I, I think there's so many ways that, that technology can really uh, create more efficiency in our industry. So, but the challenge that we're talking about today is really that, for some reason, even though coding is this really important language, yeah. it's a new form of literacy, lots of young girls and women are not exposed to it at all. Yeah. Why is that? Well, your statistics, you know, show that that you mentioned earlier, and you know, I think there's a number of reasons. I think that girls have historically self-selected out. Um, you know, I think there hasn't been. There's a number of reasons. There's not enough access to the actual learning, the actual education. I went to a great public school growing up, and I there was no such thing as computer science education at my school. 
Um, and, you know, I think it's having really interesting, dynamic, creative ways of learning it. So great curriculum, great teachers. And so I should explain also, I started a nonprofit called Code with Classy, and we teach girls to code. And we create these summer camps, these two-week-long summer camps, to teach them the ABCs. Uh, and by the end of the actual two weeks, they build and deploy apps, projects, um, and it's really incredible to see what, what they do. Um, so when you're teaching these girls, Carly, and I know that you do it like every summer, you, you know, it's incredible. Yeah. Like, what is it like for them if, if they're not exposed to it beforehand? And what, what do you learn from that? Because these, these girls are like, yeah. what, they're 13? So they're pre-college age. So yeah. before that statistic, you said only 18% of women get computer science degrees currently. You know, before they even get to college, they've already decided whether or not they think they like STEM fields. Whether they think... Can you say what STEM means? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So they already self-select in or out whether they think they're good at math or whether they think science is interesting to them. And I think that's one of the biggest opportunities to really actually make impact in these girls' lives. And that's what we do with Code with Classy. You know, we kind of open the window for these girls to realize not only, A, can they be good at anything they set their mind to, but B, there are so many creative applications with this skill set. You know, and I think one thing that, for me, uh, you know, I am somebody who, had I not ended up on the runways at 15, I, I, I would have definitely gone down the, the science route, because um, that's just the way my brain works, and I, and I love to learn about those kind of, you know, science, how science affects the world around us, and I think that they're not so far apart. There's, there's so many uh, creative ways that they actually really intersect, and the girls that are in our camps might learn about uh, coding because of, because they hear me talk about it all the time, but the thing is, is, is that it's actually, uh, it's like a language, like I said, and, um, they actually, in my opinion, I think, you know, Joe, Joe, I'm curious. I wanted to ask you how many women, how many engineers at Airbnb are women? And, you know, I think there's probably a number of entrepreneurs and business owners out there who have engineers in your company. And, and I ask, you know, how, is it a 50-50 split? Well, I have a statistic there. Okay. So <laughs> our CTO came up to me before uh, I got on stage and said, I just wanted you to know how many girl coders we have or female coders we have on our team. And we have, out of a, probably about 25 um, engineers, we have two girl coders and one uh, quality assurance analyst, mm -hmm. Aliana, Talita, and Sabina. But that's out of like 25. Yeah. So, you know, that's I think not the, uncommon. Yeah. It's, so there's, there's clearly something broken, right? Which is like, if, if the world is changing and everything's about technology and this is the language to like drive and shape technology and women aren't participating in it. In the conversation. Then what, what are the limits, like what is the impact on the world because of that? There's huge impact, but I think that w what we have to think about and at least what I'm focused on is, is the future and the future workforce. The girls who are in our camps right now are 15 to 18. They're going into college. Then they will apply to work with Business of Fashion and all of your companies uh, in the coming years. But, you know, I think there's, the, what we're trying to do is actually keep that window open and actually empower and excite girls around these industries and around these skills. And why code is, you know, so important is because, again, it's, it's a language. And if you can understand how things work or how things are built, y y you can really build anything yourself. And I think that's the really exciting thing. You know, I also have always kind of had this entrepreneurial mindset. And, and for me, when I started learning what code is and how so the, you know, who founded that my friend Kevin, who founded Instagram, I was like, oh, Kevin, he actually knows how to code. He actually built it. Like there are lines of code that built this thing that's transforming the world. Okay, wait, like anybody can learn that language or learn a language and be a part of the conversation. And, you know, to actually make change and to have an equal re representation of, or at least, you know, companies that 
I'm sure you, it's not that you're not wanting to hire more women on your engineering team. There's just not enough in the pool of talent to choose from. And I think what we're trying to do with Code with Classy is to change that, to create more excitement uh, uh, with girls, give them the, the tools to actually learn these skills, the opportunities to see how creative ways that they can apply them, and we're going to change that. You're going to have more uh, in interns coming so. your way. I hope so. I mean, it, it kind of fits into a wider theme that you know I've been thinking about and which we'll be discussing uh, later this evening, which is kind of the empowerment of girls too, right? And so yeah, you know, when you and I have talked about Code with Classy in the past, you know, one of the things that I took away is that not only is the camp giving, giving these young girls like a, a, a real skill, it changes their whole attitude towards yeah. their potential. Anybody who has daughters knows that's a, a tricky time and that's a really formidable time, uh, deciding who you think you can be and what you think you can't. And I think if you can really, and for me, this Code of Classy has grown into something uh, so much bigger than I ever set out to do, but it's amazing to see the impact that we've been able to have in the girls who have been in our camps and in our communities. Uh, it, they change the way that they think about themselves and what they think they're capable of. I mean, there are girls who weren't planning on going to college and are now studying computer science at Yale and Columbia, uh, and it, who are graduates of ours. There are girls who have gone on to win $50,000 hackathon uh, prizes from building projects. And again, that confidence factor is so key and so important to just, we create the space and we give the access to the learning for the girls, but you know, knowledge is power, and I think this is a really empowering thing for these young women. I have one last question, which is, do you think there's something that a woman or a female engineer can bring to coding that a man Absolutely. can? What? I'm sorry, I'm biased. Uh -huh. um, uh, but I, I think that our brains just are wired differently. I think we problem solve differently. And ultimately, that's what code is. You're, it's creative problem solving. And you know, I think having more women and girls in the conversation at the table when you're building algorithms, when you're problem solving, we're going to come up with a different way to get to the end result or to, to get to the answer. And I think you know, now more than ever, because our world is being transformed so quickly, in so many great ways and also some scary ways uh, by technology, it's more important than ever that we have diversity and different approaches to solving these problems. Uh, and that starts with teaching more people uh, these skills, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Well, we'll hear more from Carly tonight. Carly's also hosting a Voices Salon this evening on girls' empowerment, and I think she's emblematic of what what that, can, what that kind of empowerment can do for, not only for yourself and your career, but all of these young women that you've given this whole new path for their lives to develop. So thank you for sharing that thank with you. us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Emma.